Hey everyone, Sharkheart here bringing you a Zenless Zone Zero guide on Shiyu Defense, a challenging endgame mode similar to the Spiral Abyss from Genshin Impact or Memory of Chaos from Honkai Star Rail. If you're familiar with those other endgame modes, you'll find a lot of similarities here, but I've got a bunch of really helpful tips, including a walkthrough of each stable node so you can get those juicy rewards. Make sure to like and sub if you found this video useful, and let's start out by talking about how to unlock the Shiyu Defense. To unlock this mode, you have to first complete the Internaut Reputation Rank Up mission at Internaut level 20, and then continue the main story until you get the mission A Call from Hollow's Heart in Chapter 2. You'll meet with Ray and Roland in Scott Outpost, and after some dialogue, you will be able to access Shiyu Defense. Once unlocked, you can attempt progressively harder challenges, but don't expect to jump all the way to the top immediately. This will take some time. And by that, I mean it will take the average free-to-play player several months before completing all of Shiyu Defense. Don't worry though, I have plenty of tips to make this endgame journey smoother for you, and you don't need to beat the final stages immediately in order to get great rewards. When you start Shiyu Defense, you'll see a variety of stages to complete. The first group of stages are the Stable Nodes, which are unchanging and give you one-time rewards for completing them. Each stage has various clear conditions and you can get more rewards for better performance. The second group of stages are the Critical Nodes, which are much more difficult stages that also change every few weeks, giving players a chance to tackle fresh encounters and obtain more rewards every time they reset. In order to complete a node, you need to beat all of the enemies on that stage with at least one agent alive and a B ranking. However, if you beat the stage faster, you'll earn more rewards. Getting an A rank requires you to finish the stage with more than 4 minutes remaining, and getting an S rank requires you to finish the stage with more than 6 minutes remaining. And you can see your progress bar for your rank rating in the top right corner. Clearing a stage with a B rank gets you 100 Polychrome, Denny, and Audio Booster Master copies, while clearing with an A or an S rank gives you an additional 100 Polychrome, Denny, and more items for each increase in rank. Once you reach stage 7, you'll need two teams for Shiyu Defense, and bosses will now get a Chonky Shield that you can break more easily by attacking with their attribute weaknesses and inflicting an attribute anomaly of the enemy's weakness will automatically clear their shields. Now that I've gone over how Shiyu Defense works, I want to give you 5 critical tips to help you beat this endgame mode, and then I will give you a walkthrough of each stage of the stable nodes. Tip number 1. Look for the bonuses of each node and try to capitalize on them. Some stages will make your chain attacks deal double damage, while some stages will increase the damage of stun agents. Use the bonuses to your advantage when you can, because the stages are designed around them. Tip number two involves how you build your teams for Shiyu Defense, because you'll need several agents and bang boos for this endgame mode. But when you're starting out, it's not a good idea to build many of them at once. Your resources will just be spread way too thin, and the game will feel much harder in every other area. So just stick to building one team initially. I know it can be tempting to build teams to take advantage of these special bonuses for each stage, but honestly, it just takes too long to build up the ideal agents and bang boos for each stage of the Shiyu defense, and the bonuses are not necessary to complete the nodes. Tip number three! Stages typically have several waves of enemies, and there's usually a couple of waves of weak enemies. Use the weak enemies to build up your energy for the stronger enemies. If weak enemies are giving you trouble, you'll probably need to build your agents more. Tip number four! There's a lot of ranged enemies that like to snipe you from a distance. Do your best to close the gap and push these enemies towards each other in order to hit them all at once, because if left alone, they will just spread all over the map and waste your time. And tip number 5 is to take your time and learn enemy attack patterns. Not only will this help you survive, but being able to perfect assist and assist follow-up is crucial to getting S ranks on the nodes, especially in the later stages. Now with those tips in mind, let's go through these stable nodes of Shiyu Defense. I'll give you overall strategies and recommend teams and bang boos for each stage, but keep in mind you can complete these stages with an S rank without the optimal teams. As for the critical nodes, I'll let you discover those for yourself. 
Stable node 1 is really simple. There's several enemies and a large boss. AoE damage is great here, as are the ice and physical elements. And really just any ice or physical agent is great, but also just about anyone works well here too, because it's only stage 1 and it shouldn't be giving you that much of a problem. Stable node 2 has robotic enemies, making electric and ether damage a strong choice here. This node buffs electric anomaly buildup and shock damage, so it makes using electric agents even better. If you have Grace or Rena, this should be a cakewalk, but even Anton and Anby really put in work here. As for Bang Boos, Plug Boo, Safety, and Electra Boo are great, but once again you can just punch your way through this node if you don't have any electric agents built. Stable node 3 is where things begin to become a bit more challenging, especially if you're just starting out. But you'll be rewarded with a free Sokaku once you beat it, so it's worth completing even if you just unlocked Shiyu Defense. This stage has enemies that are weak to Aether damage, which very few players will have at launch, save for Nicole. The most difficult enemy of this stage is the Farbauti that will go on a rampage and swing its massive arms at you. Luckily, they have a big windup on their attacks, making them pretty easy to dodge and perfect assist, and if you attack them from the sides or the back, they are much easier to manage. Billy, Anby, and Nicole actually do quite well here since we don't have that many Aether Agents right now, and fast Agile Agents like Nikomata are quite nice too. For Bang Boos, Devil Boo, and Explore Boo are great on this stage. Stable Node 4 massively buffs Fire Agents and Burn Damage. You'll need a strong single target damage dealer for the stage, and luckily Soldier 11 and Kaleida are great for those who have them. Take down the ranged enemies first, as they're pretty weak, but still a nuisance. Rocket Boo and Cry Boo are great here thanks to the Fire Anomaly and Burn bonus as well. Stable Node 5 focuses on Ice Damage with several tanky enemies. Ellen is great here because of her high AoE damage potential, but if you don't have Ellen, Laika On is great, and most people received a free Corrin at launch, and don't forget you get a free Sokaku for beating Node 3, making this floor relatively free to play friendly as long as those characters are built. Ether damage also works really well here, but at launch we just have so few Ether damage characters that it's just better to stick with ice damage. And for Bang Boos, Shark Boo, Peng Boo, and Butler are great choices for this stage. Stable Node 6 eases up on the elemental advantages in favor of gameplay mechanics. This node massively buffs chain attacks and increases all agents damage after launching a chain attack. Chain attacks are those special attacks you trigger by stunning an enemy or filling their daze gauge, which is the bar under their health. Enemies here are very tanky, and although AoE damage can be really helpful, single target damage makes the boss fight much easier. There are several teams you can use here, but Soldier 11, Kaleida, and Ben work great along with Rocket Boo or Cry Boo. Anby is also a nice free-to-play choice, especially on a team that triggers a lot of chain attacks. Stable Node 7 starts to get spicy because you need two teams to even attempt every node from here on out. Having 6 agents in 2 good teams with good bang boos will take time and effort, so don't sweat it if you can't advance super fast. For the first side, you'll want a mono electric team, and you would want ether damage on the second side, but because we don't have very many good ether options at launch, Nicole, Anby, and Billy are once again a pretty good team choice. For side 1, Plug Boo, Safety, and Electra Boo are great, and Resina Boo and Devil Boo are great for side 2. Stable Node 8 makes impact and stun characters very strong. You'll want Fire for the first side, and either Ice or Physical for the second side. Considering the stage bonus and enemy weaknesses, Kaleida with Rocket Boo or Cry Boo, and Laika On with Shark Boo, Peng Boo, or Butler are perfect choices for teams 1 and 2, respectively. The enemies here are very tanky and will eat up a ton of time, so you want to take advantage of the node's bonus to stun enemies as much as possible and follow up with chain attacks. Like always, perfect assists are critical, and now you'll need them more than ever if you want to complete the stages with an S rank. Stable Node 9 has a big focus on DPS agents and increases decibel generation for your ultimate, as well as ultimate damage, by a ton. This stage also pits you against actual bosses, not just tough enemies. Luckily, it's just the bosses and not any other random weak enemies. 
They still hit like a truck though, and if you don't dodge or perfect assist, your team will get wiped out really fast. The first side is weak to ice and ether damage, Ellen or Corrin with like on and Sokaku are great here with Shark Boo, Peng Boo, or Butler as the Bang Boos. The second side is weak to Fire and Physical, and Soldier 11, Kaleida, and Ben put in work on this side with Rocket Boo or Cry Boo. Stable Node 10 once again has you fight two boss enemies. Side 1 has an Aether weakness, and once again we don't have a good mono Aether team at launch, so Billy, Anby, and Nicole will work for now. Take Resina Boo or Devil Boo for this fight and the extra ether damage they can provide and do a few practice runs, as this boss's attacks are a bit surprising and kinda tricky to dodge. But once you get used to its attack patterns, you can just dodge and perfect assist everything it does until you beat it. The boss on the second half is a lot easier to beat, since you'll probably be more familiar with dodging its attacks, and they just are generally easier to dodge too. You'll want to bring an ice team for this half, and once again, Ellen or Corrin with Like On and Sokaku are your best choices, paired with Pengbu, Sharkbu, or Butler. But you'll still need tons of damage to take these bosses out, and keep in mind the later stages of Shiyu defense are balanced around agents being max level with fully leveled up gear and bang boos. So just keep building your teams, and in time you'll be able to show these enemies who the real endgame boss is. Once you beat all the stable nodes of Shiyu defense, you're ready to try the critical nodes. These stages will be even harder, and will be the ultimate challenge for endgame players. Keep building strong teams, take advantage of the stage bonuses and attribute weaknesses, and eventually you will conquer all of Shiyu defense. That will be it for this video. Like and sub if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you'd like more Zenless Zone Zero guides. Stay awesome, everyone, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.